Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. How many of you have ever prayed the Lord's Prayer? Ever prayed it? Uh, I know Ter Terry and I were talking this, uh, this week about, um, he, was, he was a baseball coach, and he said, you know, even though I was in a secular high school, he, he taught at Cape Fear High School for many years, but um, he said, even though I was at a secular high school, he said, we prayed um, at my baseball games. He said, and, and most of the boys that, that, I, that I taught said the Lord's Prayer with me. And he said, it, it never was a big problem because they, know, they knew where I stood, and so it was never a big issue. And, um, and, and we were talking in, in one of our school meetings and, uh, about how that the secular world just puts a clamp on you so hard and makes it really difficult for teachers and educators that are Christians to say anything about God or about Jesus. Or um, I mean, like even, even this week I went to a school for a, um, it, was, it wasn't called a Thanksgiving celebration. It was called a fall feast. And I'm like, Really? I mean, on the calendar it says Happy Thanksgiving. And thankfully, it still says on my calendar on 25th of December, it still, still says Christmas Day. It says Christmas Day. And in, in, in this this morning, I, I want to bring just more of an awareness, I guess, than anything else, to what you say when you say this prayer. And I want you to pray it with me this morning. And, and if you don't know, it's on the screens, but I want you to say it with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Here we go. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You can sit down. Where does that come in the Bible? Does anybody know right off the top of your head where that comes in the Bible? Somebody say it. Matthew what? Matthew 6. And it's verses like 9 through 13. Uh, some, uh, verse, I think it's 6, 9 through 13. Um, you can help me now, ushers. Pass those out. Matthew 6, 11 says these words, and you just said them. Give us this day our What? daily bread. Now, when I was thinking this week about what to speak about this morning, I was thinking, Lord, you know, what, what should I speak about Sunday? I said, you know, we, we've, we've talked about the blessed benefits. We've talked about our inheritance last week and, and how we get blessings bestowed upon us. I said, Lord, just kind of give me something that, that would be fresh and, and a little and new and, and, and a different way of thinking at some stuff. Then I got to thinking, I thought, hey, fresh bread. So I started doing some research on fresh bread. And then it came to the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And then the more I kind of got into it, the more I kind of felt convicted to talk about food on the weekend after Thanksgiving Day. I thought, oh, Lord, here we go. I'm going to put everybody to sleep talking about food again. I want you to do something this morning before we get started. If you've got your handouts you can, do, you can write this on the back of it if you want. I think there's a place for notes on the back. I want, you to do, I want you to do something for me this morning. And you ain't got to show anybody else your paper. This is not a test. Name three things that you pray about most often. Think about it just for a second. Name three things that you pray about most often. And if you don't, if you're not, if you don't have a handout and, and you don't want to, just think about it. When... You know, when you stop to pray, how do you pray? What do you pray? What are the things that you, that you, you pray about? You know, this song I, I, that I heard, give me this, give me that, bless me, Lord, I pray. You know, that's a lot of our prayers. I love to hear my grandchildren pray. It is always the most random stuff you've ever heard in your life. Okay, let's say our prayers. God bless mommy. God bless daddy. And bless Fleck, the dog. It's just random stuff. 
Three things. So looking at this verse this morning, why do you think that God, or that Jesus told us to pray, to pray to him to provide for daily bread? Now, I want you to think about a few things. When, when you look at the Lord's Prayer, and you look at, at, at what you've just said, what you all stood up and, and you read with me, or you recited with me, we're, we're instructed by Jesus. Jesus, in, in the verse right previous to, to when he says, Our Father which art in heaven, he said, When you pray, pray like this. Jesus was given instruction. He was saying, Hey, boys, if you don't know how to pray, let me show you. How many of you have ever been in a situation in your life and said, Lord, I just don't, don't even know how to pray about this. I don't even know how to start praying about this. Well, Jesus gave us some really good instruction in the sixth chapter of Matthew. When he said, when you pray, pray like this. Now, I want you to look at this. You pray to the Father about his name. Our Father which art in heaven, what did we say? Hallowed be thy name. Look at the next one. We pray to the Father about his kingdom. Say it with me. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. So we're saying, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And also, we pray to the Father about his will. We say, your will be done on where? Earth as it is where? In heaven. All right, so if you look at the first half of that, we're praying to the Father. We're saying, Lord, hallowed is your name. Your name is a mighty name that we run to. It's a strong tower that we can run to and feel safe. And then we look, Father, we want your kingdom to come. What are we saying? We want heaven to be on earth. We want grace and mercy to abide here on earth just like it is in heaven. We want joy. We want long-suffering. We want health to be just like it is in heaven on earth. And then we say, Father, when we stop and do everything else that we can do, we want your will to be done. So we're praying to him. We're saying, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then we stop and we flip the back half of that prayer. And the second half, we're not really praying to the Father. We're praying more about ourselves. So look at these things. And, and the next thing, we pray for provision. Give us this day our daily bread. Provision. We're asking the Lord to provide for us wherever we are. And the next thing we pray for, we're praying for pardon. Pardon. Forgive us our debts. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. How many of you have ever prayed that? All of you did this morning. <laughs> Y'all are like, I ain't never prayed that until this morning. Okay, what else? And protection. Lord, lead us not into temptation. So the first half, we're praying, Lord, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. And the back half, we're praying, now, Lord. Now that we've told you what an awesome God you are, I want to stop and I want to ask you for a couple things. Lord, give me daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive me, Lord, of the things that I've done against other people and forgive them that have done stuff against me. And then he's saying, Lord, and after today, after today, help me through tomorrow. Help me get through this day. Give me bread. Let me live through the day that I'm in. He's saying, give me bread for this day. And then he's saying, forgive me of the things that have happened in my past. And then he's saying, but after you've forgiven me, Lord, then lead me not into temptation anymore. See where we're going with this? We're looking at daily bread this morning. The first half, if you notice, it's your will, your kingdom come, your will be done. And the second half is us, us, us. Give us. Jesus is teaching us that when, when in our lives, in our daily life, the first thing we should concern our life with is the Heavenly Father. Lord, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done in every area of my life. And then look back at yourself and say, Lord, now today, this is what I need for today. This is what I need you. We start with heaven. We start with the heavenly things. And then we come down to earth, which is the pattern that we should do with everything in our lives. We should seek first the kingdom of who? God and his what? Oh, come on, help me, y'all. Wake up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We should seek first the kingdom of what? God and his what? Righteousness. And then all the things will be added to who? To you, to us. We seek him first. That's the way. In, in the second half, 
God brings everything that, that he's doing into our lives into the tiniest details. Bread for our everyday, forgiveness of our past, and then what we're, where we're going from here. Lead me, Lord, not to do anything stupid today like I did yesterday. If anybody ever prayed that prayer, amen. Daily bread. Our daily bread, forgive us our debts, lead us on a temptation. Come, so look at this. Provision. Provision takes care of your present. Provision takes care of your present. It takes care of give us, give me, Lord, today what I need for today. And then look at the second thing. Pardon. Pardon. Pardon takes care of your what? Your past. Your past. Everything that has happened to you before today or on the way to church this morning or this morning in the parking lot or walking down the aisle is pardon. And then the third thing. Protection. Protection. So in this prayer, we're looking at provision, what's going to take care of your daily stuff, pardon that's going to take care of your past, and protection that's going to take care of your future. Can anybody say amen? amen. Not only that, it's not only taking care of us, give us this day, but it's taking care of you personally, me and my buddies, me and everybody around me, me and my family. Because you see, provision... Keep that up just a second. Provision takes care of your body. Give us this day our daily what? Bread. And then pardon takes care of your soul. Provision takes care of your body. Pardon takes care of your soul. And then the protection takes care of your spirit. It takes care of who you are. Lead me, Lord. Take care of my spirit. Protect me in the place that I am. All right? So first... We're going to look today more at give us this day our daily bread. Now, when Jesus was saying this, he, he wasn't saying, um, Lord, give us this day our daily angel food cake or 12-layer chocolate cake or any of those things. He was saying common, ordinary, and, and, and the, the Greek word in, in this is common, ordinary bread, just ordinary daily food. It's, it's food that you need to sustain you. When, when, I mean, I ask you this. There may, there may be some of you in here this morning, but when was the last time you actually prayed, Lord, just give me a meal today? Some of you, if you've ever been homeless, you may have actually prayed that. But most of us have prayed this week, oh God, please prevent me from eating another meal this week. Just stop me in my tracks if I put another morsel of food in my mouth. One of my friends, George Yachts, he used to say, it, 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 when he was really full, he'd say, you know what? I think I could chew some more, but I just couldn't swallow it. <laughs> Love that. But bread in this scripture is talking more than just bread. More than just yeast rolls or biscuits. We had a big argument this week. Which was the best, yeast rolls or biscuits? Holy, why argue about that? Just eat them both up. <laughs> just put a lot of butter on both of them. See, Bread in the Lord's Prayer, it stands for not just the kind of bread that you slice and eat. It stands for all of the physical and material needs of your life. Give me, Lord, exactly what I need today to sustain me through this day. Give us this day our daily bread. It means give, buy it today. Find it today. Go, go somewhere and acquire it today for this day very day for this day that is about to come when you pray this in the morning you're saying Lord give me this day right now give us what I'm going to need Lord to make it through the day give me tomorrow what I'm going to need for tomorrow but give me right now what I, what I need the, the, we can draw really a couple of conclusions from this Jesus first mentions that bread look at this he mentions that the fact that Jesus mentions bread teaches us that material things do not lie on the outside realm of prayer Lord, I need you today, Lord, and this is what I need. Lord, I need you to give me what I need to pay my car payment today. Lord, I need, I need clothes for my kids, material things. Give us this day our daily bread. Give me today, Lord, exactly what I'm looking for. A lot of people have, have taught that it's not spiritual to pray for physical needs. Well, that's not right because I'm telling you, you're, you're not just a soul or a spirit that's floating around. Last time I checked, I was a real person. Anybody else a real person in here this morning? Again, y'all are like, I, I ain't raising my hand for nothing in this place this morning. 
Are any of you real people today? If you're not, phone home because E.T.'s looking for you this morning. <laughs> but let me tell you this. When you're praying, Jesus is teaching us how to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. If food's what you need, then pray for food. If money's what you need, pray for money. If a job's what you need, pray for a job. If health is what you need, pray for health. He's saying, Lord, I want provision today. I want material things, Lord, that I need in my life today. And I'm being straight up because I know you know who I am. I'm asking you today, give me, Lord, today the things that I need. And then the other thing Jesus is showing us in, give, give us this day our daily bread. Second, he's saying this. He's teaching us the importance of moment by moment, 100% dependence on God for the things that we need. Give us this day, daily. God, give those things to us. We are depending on you for our needs. Any of you needy? Any of you need anything? Y'all are liars this morning. Y'all really are. Maybe you are. But he's teaching us that we need to learn to be dependent on God in every day of our life. Daily dependence on him in every single area that we have. Matthew Henry, in his, one of his commentaries, he said that the followers of Christ are to have a hand-to-mouth existence. That we're supposed to be, everything that we do, be waiting on the Lord to fill our hands so we can put it in our mouth or put it on our body for whatever that we need. So we're going to look at four things. Four daily steps, four steps to daily bread living. All right? Four steps to daily bread living. Are you with me this morning? I'm going to try my best not to put anybody asleep no more than you are right now. Okay? It won't get any worse than this. So stay with me. It was so funny this morning we walked in and uh, Teresa was gathering some, some pillows for a lady that was getting some pillows for a rest home. And I walked in the door and had two arms full of pillows and they said, is this for your sermon this morning? <laughs> no! No! People in a rest home. No! Four steps. All right. Give us this day our daily bread. Say that with me. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, th this is not only talking about bread. Give us this day our daily bread. This is talking about an entire concept of life. You think, how in the world did you come up with this? I, I didn't. If you look at the verse before it, Jesus said, pray this way. This is the words of Jesus that he's teaching us these, this way. So four things. Number one, gratitude. Have gratitude to God for all of his blessings. Have gratitude to God for all of his blessings. Now the first step in this comes from the very first word, give. 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 Give us this day our daily bread. How many know that everything that we have ultimately comes from God in heaven? Everything that we are comes from God. And if you're, if you're on the fence this morning, if you're wondering about, about living your life, serving Christ, not serving Christ, if you're wondering about, about all of the things that we talk about in here, if they're really real, let me promise you this. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father in heaven. Comes from the Father. Everything comes from Him. Moses said this in Deuteronomy. Look at this. He said, when you have eaten and you are satisfied... Praise the Lord for God, for the, pra praise the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. When you've eaten and you're satisfied, then stop and say, Lord, I'm going to give you praise. Look what David says in 1 Chronicles 29, 14. He says, but who am I and who are the people that we should be able to give as generously as this? As generously as this. Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. David was telling the people, said, hey, we know that we're giving it to you, but everything that we're giving to you comes from him. You've seen singers before. I've seen Mark Lowry a hundred times. When he finishes singing, he'll go. I mean, he's making fun, but really, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. Look what else David said in, in Psalm 145. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. You raise up your hands and he begins to fill your hands. Matthew Henry had it right. You open up your hands and let him fill your hands. Then he gives it to you. I, I wonder this morning, have you ever thought about just the splendor of everything around you? Just the opportunity that you had this week to eat turkey and dressing. If you don't like turkey and dressing, then this statement ain't for you. But the opportunity that you had to sit and put your feet under a table this week and eat the most unbelievable stuff that you've ever eaten. You know, God could have made us eat mud. 
He could have made us eat mud. He could have made mud the satisfying thing for every one of us. But he didn't. He gave us the most unbelievable palate for the most unbelievable foods that, that you can only imagine. He could have made everything gray. He could have made everything in the world just a hue of, of different colors of gray. But he didn't. Have you, how many of you seen the sunset this week or looked at the sky, how blue it was? He made a whole world and, and painted it in technicolor for all of us. So we're to give gratitude, to give back. Say, God, thank you. We've given you today our daily bread. We're giving you what we have, Lord. Look, at, look up at the clouds or, or just eat an orange or an apple and let the juice dribble down your mouth and look all dumb. But just enjoy it for a minute. Or you, you step into a cold stream and, and it just takes your breath away. Or you lay on the floor and you laugh with your grandkids till you can't get your breath anymore. Or you climb a high mountain and you look at the splendor of the Lord. Everything good comes from Him. Or you stop and listen to the crickets and the frogs at nighttime and just know that His splendor is all around you. Every one of those gifts are a gift from God Almighty. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about a daily way to live. Everything of value you possess comes in one way or another from the hand of Almighty God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Every breath, every gift. The, 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 this truth ought, ought, ought to make you grateful for the gift of life itself. I, I want to ask you something. Are you having a bad day? I spoke to somebody who said this. When the doctors tell you you only have three months to live, there's really no such thing as a bad day. Man, what a world of truth. If you know you're only going to have a few weeks to live, I'm telling you, every day you have becomes precious to you. And you won't have a bad day. You get up and smell the roses every morning and smell the elixir of life that's around you. How different is the way most of us live every day? Because every, every once in a while, we all get up and say, What's wrong with you today? Oh, I'm having a bad day. You see, a bad day is a luxury that we give ourselves because we figure we've got a whole bunch of days ahead of us that we can have good days. So we choose. We pout. We're miserable. We have a pity party. We feel sorry for ourselves. But let me tell you something. Somebody that has three months to live don't have that luxury. Only living can go in the corner and sulk. I'm preaching to you this morning. Years ago, I heard somebody say this, that happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Let me tell you this. So is anger. And so is slothfulness. And so is patience and gratitude, and doubt and faith. Every good and perfect gift. Give, give gratitude to the one who deserves it. We're that way because we choose to be that way. So let me tell you this. Choose you today what lifestyle that you're going to have. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Choose what you're going to do when you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I give you, I give you gratitude and thankfulness. Psalm 90, 12 says this. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Let's wake up. Let me tell you this, this morning, something for all of you. Life is way too short to wake up every day with a bad day. Life's way too short to wake up with a bad day. So number two, contentment. Have contentment with what God has already provided. Give us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for what you've given us today. Thank you that you've already given us something that we can put our hands into. Give us this day our daily bread. God, thank you. Our, our, our greatest needs, not our greeds. But I'll tell you what I really do need, Lord. Not your wildest desires. Lord, I really need a car. Lord, I would really like for it to be a Lamborghini. But I really need a car, Lord. And then when he blesses you with a pinto, you grumble. It, it, it's, not, it's not just an invitation to gain great material wealth so you can add to your bottom line. It, it's, not, it, it's not an invitation to, to go online tonight and, and, and on, on Cyber Monday Order everything that you see on the internet that would add to your collection of the best toys. I love toys. I really do. But we're to trust God for what we truly and really need. 
Our God will supply all of our needs. needs. Have, you, have any of you ever studied what Jesus ate or the way Jesus ate when he was here? Now, a lot of times Jesus ate and he, and he enjoyed food. If you look at the scripture, it says that Jesus went to festivals and, and he went to banquets and he went to places. And in fact, he went to so many places that, that he enjoyed that the, the Pharisees even called him a glutton and a drunkard. He enjoyed good food. And, and in the Bible, you'll find that Jesus ate at the homes of some very wealthy people in the world. But when Jesus did the cooking himself, what did he make? Kind of two fish and five loaves of bread. He was simple. He was simple. Jesus provided for the people. He wasn't extravagant. Proverbs 37 and 9 says this. It says, two things I ask of you, O Lord. Don't refuse me before I die. Look at this. Keep falsehood and lies from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Look at this. Otherwise, I might have too much and disown you and say, who is Lord? Because I've got so much, why do I need God? Or I, be, I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. What's he saying? He's saying, Lord, don't make me too rich or too poor. But Lord, give me everything that I need to be enough. To be enough that I'm going to be content. That I'll have contentment in my life. Can anybody say amen for contentment every single day? Okay, number three, let's keep going. Almost done. Confidence. Confidence that God's going to meet my daily need. To meet my need day by day. Have confidence that God will meet my need day by day. Give us today our daily bread. Give me what I need right now, this minute, in the next 24 hours, in the next 48 hours. Start me today. You see, daily bread living means believing that God will provide exactly what you need on a day-to-day -day basis. If we look back in the scripture and we see the children of Israel when they were, were brought out in the Exodus, they were brought out of Egypt, and they were grumbling. Why did you bring us out here? We, at least we had great food. I, I touched on this a little bit last week. Why, 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 are you, why did you bring us out here? So Moses went to God and he said, God, I've got trouble with your people. And God looked back at Moses and said, you think I got problems? You got problems. Look what I got. I got them all. But I'll provide you food. So what did the Lord do? He sent manna and quail. He had quail every single morning flow down. Uh, flow. They flowed down to the ground. That's what they did. <laughs> they flew down to the ground. And there would be quail. And God's instructions were specific. He said, go out and get as much as you need for yourself and your family, but don't get any more than you need. Why? Because if you took more than you needed, it would rot. And the maggots would get in and infest your quail. So on the day before the Sabbath, you can collect for two days. And it'll keep for two days, but that's it. I'm telling you, if it would have been me and I had come out of Egypt, I would have probably sent Erica and Kramer out there with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> and I said, hey, get a little extra. We'll put some under the bed. Nobody's ever going to know it. You know, I, I would, <laughs> my life would have been, been a little bit on the wormy side for a few days after that. But God's teaching us something in the Old Testament when he talks about provision that he's reiterating in the New, New Testament. He, he's willing to supply our needs, but he's going to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. And how many of you know that that stinks? Come, I'm the only one that thinks that stinks. Please go back, eat more turkey, and sleep more this week. It, to me, in my human nature, it stinks that God won't give me a little bit of a surplus and let me look and say, I can coast for a few days. Thank you, Jesus. But no, he's going to provide your daily, what you need on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't like it. Most of you have freezers at home, and they're full of, of, of beef and vegetables and stuff that's horribly freezer burnt. <laughs> right? Can you say amen? So you amen on the freezer burnt stuff, and you don't amen on none of the good stuff that I've done before. But most of us have plenty. I mean, we've made Tupperware a billion-dollar industry, a household name. How many of you go and eat at a restaurant here in town? Would you like a to-go box? Oh, yes. we got to take some home because there just ain't enough garbage in our refrigerator yet. And what happens? 
It's your kid's science experiment for the sixth grade because it all turns green in about two weeks. And that pasta that was wonderful at Carabas is now eaten up and gone. But you don't have the flu because you've eaten enough penicillin on that stuff. <laughs> Say what, Mike? You know, why do we do this? Because we know life is uncertain. Look at somebody and say, life's uncertain. Because see this, we save and we Tupperware stuff. But if the truth be known about most of us, if we had one bad month, it would wipe all of our savings out. One bad month. One bad month. Or you can be doing wow fine. And the doctor comes to you and says, I'm sorry, your tests are positive, you've got cancer. And life gets rearranged in a split second. That's when you look to the Father above and say, give me this day my daily bread. I talked to a single mom not too long ago that owns her own business, and I asked her, I said, hey, how's it going? She said this. She said, we're barely making it. June was tough. But I've got two jobs in July, and we're going to be okay for July. And that's the way it is. When we're just about to run out of money, God brings me a little bit more work in. It's not ever easy. But see, she learned something. She discovered something, that God is in the business of supplying our needs right when we need it. Right when we need it. So does that mean you shouldn't plan ahead? No. Because it's biblical to plan ahead. But you should plan ahead and not worry ahead. You should plan ahead and not worry ahead. Give us this day our daily bread. The whole point in daily bread living is to take one day at a time, to take one situation at a time. It, it, it's a basic it's a basic principle of our life. And Jesus is saying, I'll give you today exactly what you need. One day. You see, daily bread living, look at this. Daily bread living means taking life one day at a time and being confident that God will take care of your needs day by day by day by day by day. Daily bread living. Daily bread living. Give me, Lord, today my daily bread. Now let's look at one more thing and we're done. Have generosity toward those who are less fortunate. Now this principle comes from one more word that's in that sentence. Give us this day. Say the next word with me. Ah. So it's not talking just about you. It's not saying give me today my daily bread. It's saying give us today our daily bread it's a call for community you see you're never invited Jesus is saying this you're never invited to pray this prayer selfishly it should be for you and those that are around you it's hard ain't it yesterday we were sitting in a stoplight and had had Abby and Amelia and Banks and Canaan with us. We were going to eat dinner last night. There was a homeless guy standing on the corner. Had a sign. Homeless. Please help. And you know, they try. The homeless people, and if there's anybody homeless in th this morning, I'm not putting you down or anything like that. I want you to know that we love you and we will help you all that we can. But as a rule of thumb, when we're sitting in the, in the line at a stoplight, they wait for you to look at them. You know? They're, they're walking along, but it's like when you get eye contact, they're, and then they just stare at you. We're sitting at the, at the light. Abby said, Poppy, she read his sign. Homeless, please help. I said, Poppy, have you ever helped a homeless person? I said, yeah. I said, I have. She said, is he homeless? I said, well, his sign says he is. She said, why didn't you help him? Brother Woodrow, lead us in prayer. I'm done. <laughs> because, see, the Bible says this in the sixth chapter of Luke. Give, and it'll be given to you. 
Now, for all of us, we live in a dog-eat-dog world. We live in a dog-eat-dog world that says, pull the person down beside of you so you can get to the top. But just the opposite is what Jesus is saying here. He's saying here, there's four principles. Look at these. I'm almost finished. I'll call it Biblical Economics 101. Look at these. Principle number one, everything you have comes from God. Number two, everything that is given to you is given in trust to you. Number three, the blessings that you have are not given to you for your own personal benefit. And number four, what is given to you in trust is given that you might share it with other people. That's give us this day our daily bread. I'm going to tell you something this morning. When, what you've been given, the abilities and the giftings and the talents that you've been given is not just for you. It's for somebody that's around you. Somebody that needs it. I, I, bless you. See right there just came a blessing from me to him just that quick. See how it works? In a, in a minute, he gave you exactly what you needed for your daily bread. Amen. You see, our, our in that scripture implies that you don't pray it alone. You see, our, pray an hour instead of praying my, or our instead of mine is LGLEO at its best. It's our motto, loving God, loving each other. That's what this is talking about. It's LGLEO at its very core. It's caring and loving somebody else. Listen, most of us are going to have all we need to eat today and tomorrow. We have all that we're going to need to eat the day after that. And when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we can never pray it as if we were on, the only people in the world. We can never pray it. And if we're not thinking about people that are in need around us, we need to stop praying this prayer at all. Because see, when the rich man prays, he should also be praying for wretched Lazarus who's laying at the gate. And when the rich man's prayer is sincere, he's going to make sure that Lazarus has more than just crumbs to eat. And God's given you two loaves of bread. He's saying, you know what? Maybe I should give you a loaf of this bread before it molds sitting on top of my refrigerator. You think, why in the world are you preaching this today? Because I ate about that much too much for Thanksgiving. And then I see a homeless guy at the stoplight that I drove right past. It's hard. Thanks a lot, Abby. I don't like her as much as I did, Erica. It's hard. You know, and how many times have we prayed the Lord's Prayer at every game we've done, TJ, and gone right over that verse? Give us this day our daily bread. Our. Our. So where do we begin? To me, this prayer opens up a whole new way of looking at life. It's what the Christian life is all about. And I think that's why that Jesus prefaced those words to his buddies when he was saying, hey, boys, if you don't know how to pray... Pray this way. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't know what to pray for, pray it like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. So let me summarize it all. Daily bread living is these four things. Look at them. Gratitude to God for all his blessings. Contentment with God for what he's already given you. Confidence that God will meet your needs day by day by day by day by day. And generosity toward those who are less fortunate than you. That's daily bread living. That's what we're called to. That's L-G-L-E-O. That's loving God. That's loving each other. So I'm going to give you one more truth. Daily bread living means, that believing, means believing that because God is God, he will give you what you truly need when you truly need it. He'll give you exactly what you need when you need it. I do love Abby Erica. <laughs> kind of quiet.
quiet here, huh? Daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to stand up to your feet. Don't anybody leave. Just stay here 30 more seconds and I'll let you go. Go back to the very beginning, Rhonda. I want you to put the Lord's Prayer back up. I want you to pray this with me again. And I want you to pray it under, with more understanding than you've ever prayed it before. And I want you to take it to heart this morning. Pray it with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. I promise you something today. If you meant what you just prayed, your life can never be the same. Your life can never be the same if you meant what you just prayed. I can't add anything else to what Jesus prayed. Lord bless you. We'll see you this week. You're dismissed.